Welcome to the second video. The first video is linked up here and of course in the video description down below. And this is what we made in our first video. So we have this caster wheel following our movement. Cool. Now for this tutorial, I'm just going to start with a brand new Blender file. Again, delete everything. Um, and I'm going to start with creating a path because this is probably um, what you want to do when you have an animation. Shift A, curve, Bezier curve. Go into edit mode and let's just create some interesting looking path. Move around and then uh, I think it's control right mouse button. Yeah, it's sort of like an auto extrude. What do we want to do? Maybe go like this, go back out and then rotate this around and then F to fill it and close it off. Now let's fix this a little bit, make it look nicer. This guy also. Okay, so this is going to be the path that our uh, shopping cart has to take. And I can already see that I don't like this because it doesn't have enough resolution. Let's just, just go 64. And then we want to move our shopping cart. So let's get some sort of a shopping cart representation in here. Take a plane scale on the X. So we're looking down again. I don't know what does a shopping cart look like. Okay, so this is our shopping cart. And how can we make the cart follow this path? You might be thinking, well, that's easy. Select the cart. Shift select the path, control P, and then go uh, follow path. And yes, that works. Then the shopping cart is going to follow that path. However, we need positions in geometry nodes. If we do this, the position of this object, the location here, is never going to change. It's just going to stay 0, 0, 0, although it's moving along the path. Um, so we can't work with it. We we can't get the, the location info of the real location info of the object. We always just get zero. So that's not uh, the solution. The solution is to make this object follow this path in geometry nodes. So we have to do that. Let's go over to geometry nodes, uh, look down. Um, I didn't, isn't this working? No, it wasn't working, but now it's here. Okay. Uh, with our plane, let's call this cart. With the plane selected, we go to geometry nodes and we have to figure out how we can make this follow that path now. No, actually, actually, we don't want this on the cart. We don't need geometry nodes here. Again, we want a single vertex. So let's go to shift a mesh single vertex. Okay, this is going to be the one that gets the geometry nodes node tree. Cool. So this we have a vertex here. We want to move it along this curve. How do we do that? Well, we're going to need a set position node. You can already know that. <laughs> and we need some sort of position or offset. Let's think about this. We can evaluate this curve. So we need to get the curve in. That's easy. Just drag and drop it in. And then we get the geometry. Yeah, so we can sample sample curve. This is the Bezier curve. We sample that. Uh, we have a factor which is between 0 and 1. 0 will be the start of the curve and 1 will be the end. Now this is a curve that loops around so that should be perfect. And then we need the factor between 0 and 1. We want the frame number but we have to divide that with a math node. Divide uh, Okay, math. We want to divide our frame number by the number of frames in our animation, so 250. Now we have a factor between 0 and 1. And what do we get from our sample curve? We get a position. Cool. So we could set the position of our single vertex to that position on each frame. And then the vertex, oh, it's already up here. I don't know if you can see it on the recording, but it's showing up there. Let's see, frame. is this the start? Oh yeah, it's already following, cool. So we are on the single vertex. This is where the geometry nodes, uh, node tree is. We're sampling that other object, the curve, using the frame number. We get the position of that sample and we're setting our own single vertex to that position. Now the vertex is following the curve. 
So it's right down here at the moment. Cool. Now we want to move our cart to that position. Again, we don't have a cart in here. We only have a single vertex. So all we need to do is instance on points, single point. What do we instance? An object info the cart. So now we should end up with a cart. Let's go back here, switch off cache, delete. Let's see if it works. Uh, cart original instance to the point. It should do something. Okay, so if I hit spacebar now, the cart is following the path. Cool, so we really don't need to see this cart because we're making our own in here. Um, right now, of course, very obviously missing the rotation. So how do we do that? Well, same thing as in the previous vid video, we're going to use the align Euler to vector. And in this case, with the sample curve node, we already have a vector, namely the tangent. Right, so if we sample a point on this curve, the sample only not only gives us the position, but it also gives us this tangent, which is already the direction uh, vector that we want. So what about if we use that? Again, we want to rotate on C using Y rotation, plug that in here. And it looks like the cart is already following. Let's delete this. Okay, cool. So the cart is following this path. Now, what about the wheels? My name is Chris and I make free Blender tutorials here on YouTube. If you enjoy the content, please give this video a thumbs up. Check out all the other videos on my channel. And if you don't want to miss any future free tutorials, don't forget to subscribe. It really helps. Thank you so much. So this is all just for the cart following the path. And now back here, we're going to take care of four wheels. Right, where am I placing those four wheels? Well, I'm just going to use these four corners. So we have four vertices inside of this geometry here. Um, this is an instance, so we need to uh, realize instances. If we do that and I hover over here, we now have four vertices. These are the four corners and that's where we're going to put our wheels. Let's start with a single wheel, first of all. I played around with this quite a lot and I think the, the best solution that I could come up with is this. Let's Think about just one wheel for a second. Where does that first wheel have to be? Um, well, let's take the first corner of our four corners and then do the same thing as we did in the previous video. So the first corner, how do we get the position of the first corner? Whatever our input geometry is, um, maybe we want six wheels, I don't know, or three wheels. Well, we just get rid of all of the other corners and then just focus on one corner that gives us a single vertex. And then we can do the same thing as in the last video, put the wheel onto that single vertex. Okay, so in here, um, I'm going to delete some geometry. Delete geometry. I'm gonna use this geometry and which uh, geometry do we want to delete? What's the selection? Uh, we want uh, to select everything uh, based on the index. Each vertex has an index, 0, 1, 2, 3, or I don't know what <laughs> the order is, but uh, index of the vertex and we delete that and we delete everything but that. So we need a compare node uh, where the index is not equal to, no, not a float an integer. Integer is not equal to index zero, for example, that's the result. So we delete everything except for one vertex. If we look at this now, we should just have one vertex. Okay, so this is our index zero is down here. Cool. Now, what do we do now? Now we have to put our wheel in that position. We don't have a wheel yet. So let's create one real quick. Let's go back to the collection. Go shift A, let's take, um, maybe let's do a cylinder. Let's just go into edit mode, scale this down, 
scale on the sea. Let's make a big, big wheel. Scale on anything but the C. Okay, let's look at it from the side. Shift A, circle, rotate Y90, scale down, put it on down here. This is just going to be a very simple representation. Then extrude on the X, so select everything linked, GX, let's look at it from the top. Uh, GX, put it in the middle, like that. Okay, so we have this. Now let's select this fillet. Go over here, select this fillet. I could, could have just added a cylinder. <laughs> um, then add some loop cup, cuts in here. Inset this a little bit. Let's scale that inwards. Inwards. All right, I think that's good enough. Shade auto smooth looks like a wheel to me. Okay, this is going to be our wheel. Let's call it wheel. Now we want to put this wheel to that point over here. This again is just a single vertex now because we deleted everything else. And now we do the same thing as in the last tutorial. We're going to need a simulation zone. Plug in this geometry. That's the single vertex. Inside here, we are going to Again, capture an attribute, we capture the position that gives us the position from the last frame. Uh, oh, oops, this has to be vector position like that. Okay, then we do a vector math, vector math, we subtract. Just want to put the old one in here and a new one on top. What is the new, uh, new position? That's gonna be interesting. Set position, we already know we need that. And that's the output geometry for our simulation. Okay, what's the new position? Well, the new position is this vertex right there. So we're setting the position of the vertex because, uh, yeah, we need to do this because we now have to follow the path of this point, right? The, the cart is following this point, uh, sorry, draw this point and following along here. But now we have to follow this point. So in this simulation here, we're just looking at this point, how it, this is going around our course. Well, we can do a sample index uh, from our input geometry, index zero again, just like here, which gives us a vector if we sample the position. Okay, so we're sampling the position of this vector and we're setting the position uh, the setting the position of this single vertex to that position that we're getting from our input geometry, but not the, the one that has the deleted stuff. We just want the original. Okay, so this first of the original before we delete, I have to move this. Uh, I have to move all of this over a little bit. Okay, so we can sample the original. Boop, boop, boop. That's the position we want the vector, or I mean the, the vertex to be. And then we can do the same thing here again. We subtract this. We subtract the old position from the new position. And that gives us our velocity. We name this to, or yeah, whatever, directional vector. And, and also we want the rotation. So again, we do the align Euler to vector. This is the vector, Y, C. This gives us the rotation. Awesome. So I think this should be, hold on, where did my position go? Oh, it's hiding back here. All right, so this is the simulation. We're sampling the position just like in the last tutorial, to put the wheel onto this uh, single vertex here. Should be a single vertex. So we need to instance, I never know which one, instance on points. We have a single point. We need to instance the object info the wheel. So let's do that. 
And then we can take care of the rotation. Let's just see if this does anything. Of course, we have to plug that into our geometry that we already have. So this geometry here is just that. Now we're instancing our wheel to this position and we have to do uh, join and join the wheel. This is the wheel in that. Let's see if that does anything. Do we have a wheel? Yes, we do. And it's uh, on that corner. Now let's jump forward one frame. Yep, it's following the corner. Now we have to take care of the rotation of the wheel. All right, that looks good. Delete. Now let's rotate the wheel. We have the rotation here. We already did that. Align uh, rotation. And then we get the rotation out and we rotate our wheel to match that. Is that working? On frame one. On frame one, it's not correct, but then on the second frame, as soon as we have a direction vector, the wheel is already moving and following this corner. And does it look correct? Uh, looks perfect to me, right? We can hide this wheel, don't need that one. We're creating our own through this instance here. And now we need to do the same thing four times, but of course that's really, really easy now. By the way, the finished blend files of all my tutorials can be downloaded from patreon.com slash crispy. Because we already have this all set up to get rid of everything but index. And then here we sample the index. So we're gonna need, need that and we just put all of this inside of a group. So we select it, control G, that gives us a group. Um, we don't need two inputs here. So let's see, we don't need this. This is the same geometry. This is the group input. And then we have to delete everything but this index and we sample at that same index. All right. But the simulation, what's the group output is an instance. We could, we could, we could. Or shall we yeah so we get an instance it doesn't matter okay so now we have a very simple group for one wheel let's just bring that back and delete this so now this is one wheel for index zero shift d index one shift d index two shift d index three all based on the same cart geometry, those four vertices. Plug that in here, join it all together. Ooh, let's see if it works. Go back to frame one, save, just in case it doesn't work. And then one frame forward. Yep, I think we are basically done. So now we have our little cart and we have four wheels. And they're following, and turning. And to me, this looks physically correct. Now, of course, we can go into our node group. We can do the whole thing with the rotation coming back in here and then factor point, I don't know, let's do point six six so that it doesn't jump around too much the wheel. That's one thing. The other thing, of course, is you probably don't want to see this cart. This cart object is just to get the four positions you probably want to model something that looks like a cart up here. Um, I don't know, a handle, <laughs> something. Um, but this is the basic setup to create four caster wheels following the four corners of wherever you want to put them in your cart. Looking pretty good. All right, this is my solution to the caster wheel problem. Thanks to Andy for the challenge. If you have any tips, suggestions, or questions, please drop me a note down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, really helps the channel. Thank you for watching, I'll see you soon. Bye.